Hey everyone, it's Matt with Holistic Homebrew, and today I'm going to be going over the Dungeon Master Training Series, and our episode's going to be focused on how to make shops inside your city. The first step in this venture is figuring out what is the shop going to be selling? Are they going to be a general store where they sell a bunch of items ranging from non-magical to magical? Or is this going to be a specific store where they sell pretty much one thing, like a blacksmith or a tanner or a cobbler or just a magic shop? Figure out what they are going to sell. If you're having trouble figuring out what the shop can sell, here's a list of items that you can choose. Feel free to use any of these right here. So for our example today, we're going to be making a magic shop. So we want our shop to be selling magic items. Okay, cool. We got that figured out. Next part that we need to figure out is who's going to be selling the stuff. You need an NPC that will be in charge of the store. They are the shopkeep. So for our example today, we're going to be having Billy Bob Johnson. He's in charge of the magic shop that we're creating. Cool. He's a human man. He's about 35 and you just want to create a little bit of a backstory on that NPC. He's in charge of the, the shop. Cool. We got that figured out. How do you get it? So you kind of want to create a little bit of a backstory for the NPC, just, just in case the players always ask questions. They always ask questions. Okay, so how did Billy Bob Johnson acquire this magic shop? Well, it's been passed down from generation to generation. He had it from his father and his father had it from his father. It's just consistently been passed down. So we got our shop, we got our shop keep, and with a little bit of a backstory, we're ready to move on to the next step. The next thing we need to figure out is covering three senses for when the players walk into that shop. What does it look like? What does it smell like? And what do the players hear around the shop? Cover those three senses and I promise you it's going to be a game changer for your players reaction when they're buying magic items. You no longer will have that boring, what do you want magic item? Or the, we're going to spend an entire session just buying stuff. So as our players walk into Billy Bob Johnson's shop, they get that strong musky smell, like as if you're walking into a library, just that potent smell. The next thing, they look around and they see as there's a ladder with a bunch of books climbing up high and you see scrolls, you see magical swords, wands. Just describe what it looks like to your players. Give them a few notes that they can cover with it. And what do they hear? They hear as the shop, there's a bunch of people talking back and forth. They're talking with the shopkeep and other helpers with the shop. This is a rather large shop. So Billy Bob Johnson's definitely been in business for a while. Oh yeah, one of the things I almost forgot, figure out the name of the shop. What is it gonna be called? Billy Bob Johnson, it's been in his family for a while, so Johnson, how about Johnson's Magics? Something weird, doesn't need to be really good. Most of the time the players, they're not gonna remember it most of the time, so just have fun with it. Okay, and lastly, the final thing you wanna cover when making a shop is, what are they gonna sell? So, we have a magic shop. We need to sell magic items. Try and cover at least five magic items per type. So you need to have five common, five uncommon, five rare, five very rare. Try not to go into the legendary or artifacts. Try and save that for like dungeon crawls or uh, a major NPC giving them a magical item. It, it's more fun story-wise. Just buying a legendary, it's, it's a little boring. Okay, so as your players are walking around the shop, one of your players sees a bag of holding, a short sword plus one, they see a long sword of warning, they see a crossbow plus one, tons of items that they can choose from. But like I said, cover five magical types and you should be good. So five common, five uncommon, five rare, five very rare. Try and have an option of stuff. And you know, Oh, and Billy Bob Johnson has, you know, magical potions just lying around on the counter. Yeah, who knows? Just hand the players one. Don't give them really strong stuff, but just give them one for free. And then they're going to love that NPC forever. Now that I showed you Billy Bob Johnson's magic shop, known as Johnson's Magics, you now have a shop created. You have the shop, what it looks like, smells like, everything the players hear. You have the NPCs run it, Billy Bob Johnson. You also have a bunch of magic items laid out. You are ready for when the session starts and they walk into that magic shop. You're set. It's done. Do this with many other shops. You can do it with apothecaries, blacksmiths, tanners, cobblers. Do anything you want with it. You're the DM. You're there to inspire your players. 
Now that you got all the magic items laid out, just figure out how much they're gonna cost. There's no good guide what to charge for a magic item. For like a blacksmith or a tan or something like that, they do show you in the Dungeon Master Guide how much those items would cost for just swords, armor, stuff like that. But they don't really cover what to charge for a magic item. So I've seen many different sources on how to use it. This is the one I tend to use whenever I'm charging magical items. So feel free to copy this if you want. Just do what you want with it. Charge them ridiculous amount if they're trying to, you know, screw over the players. Uh, or give them a discount if they've been helping out the NPC. Just be fair to your players. Don't do it just so they don't have this magical item. Now, I hope this video has helped you learn how to make shops within your city because the Dungeon Master Guide doesn't show you too much on that kind of information. So feel free to leave a comment down below if there's anything that I missed or that you need more clarification on. But of course, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and if you want to see any other videos, just leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what types of videos you guys are looking for me. But until then, keep on rolling.